Welcome to the director's spotlight on Rob Zombie. Yes, Rob Zombie is a director that's been in the game for like 20 years at this point. He's directed a shitload of his own music videos. Uh, some of his music videos you should check out if you're a horror fan and you have not checked them out. Uh, the Living Dead Girl, it's like an ode to Doc, uh, Cabin of Dr. Caligari. Um, Red Red Kruvy is an ode to uh, Clockwork Orange. Like there's, there's plenty other good ones out there. And the tunes aren't that bad. Like I'm a pretty fucking diehard like you know, Wu Tanger kind of guy, like of that era, but I, I can fuck with some Rob Zombie tunes for sure. So, getting into his films, uh, we're not going to be looking at all of them, and this isn't like an in depth review or anything, but there will be spoilers. So, if you've not watched the movies, then don't watch this video unless you want it to all be spoiled for you. But basically, oh, and also, I'm going to be excluding Halloween 1 and 2 because I want to save those for my uh, Killer Horror Remakes series. And I'm going to be excluding 31 because I haven't seen it since it came out and I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I don't want to discredit the film by just ripping it apart from my opinion that came out. Like, you know, my opinion that's stale at this point. So I definitely need to rewatch that film and see if I have a, a different take on it. So uh, with that being said, we're going to dive into House of a Thousand Corpses, which is his debut film and a hell of a debut film at that. Like the, the thing about this film is he, he mixes uh, video with film and some like eight millimeter shit and you just get this slurpy of a film that's set in the 70s it's totally exploitation and you got exploitation superstars in there like karen black you got sid Haig, you got the dude from uh i'm blanking on his name but he's the the cop that the cop in the film is the dude from night of the living dead the remake with tom savini and he's also in blood in blood out tom towels that's his name great actor i love him he plays a he plays about the most uh, you know, calm and collected guy in the entire film as the the police officer, and he has this he has this wiry guy. It's actually Walter Goggins, who's a Tarantino regular at this point, and it's great. It's great, man. Like everyone's interactions with each other in this films are cool and believable to me. Uh, I, I'm not the biggest fan of of our the, the the teenagers, if you want to call them that. But I am a fan of all the murderers and all the side characters and, you know, red hot pussy liquor and all that kind of like just weird Rob Zombie kind of shit, you know, that's that's been inspired by th like there wouldn't be red hot pussy liquor if there wasn't for, uh, you know, like the rabbit and red club. You know what I mean? So it, it, like you can tell Rob Zombie's inspired by the stuff that he grew up on and it's great. It bleeds through. And, and I and I really do respect that. So uh, House of a Thousand Corpses is all about these kids that are going across country finding these roadside attractions and they're writing a book on them. So they end up at Captain Spaulding's Museum of Monsters and Mad Men. And while they're there, they discover the story of this guy named uh, Dr. Satan, who's, who's pretty much the only tie that makes this film a kind of supernatural film near the end. But uh, I digress. So basically, Captain Spaulding gives them a map to go find this tree where Dr. Satan was infamously hung. And on the way, of course, they pick up this hitchhi hitchhiker. Shit goes sour, and they end up at the hitchhiker's house. And that's when the film really fucking starts off. Uh, but not to forget about the opening scene. There's a robbery that takes place at Captain Spaulding's museum, and it's great. And the one-liners are so fucking good. Uh, you know, like, don't be shoving a bunch of paper down, paper towel down there. You're going to plug it up off the snake, the shit out of that thing again. Like, all that stuff is so greasy and grimy. I love it. Um, hell yeah, man. So, basically, once, once the teenagers are at the house, they're introduced to a, a fucking to a comedy of characters that you know like Otis who's played by Bill Mosley like I said Karen Black who's the mother Sherry Moon Zombie who's the hitchhiker type chick and uh just tons of other tons of other cool guys the old man who's fucking hilarious he's telling a bunch of stand-up comedy at one point in the film and he's just like eat your wife's pussy and all this shit it's it's crazy man it's crazy stuff and uh once they find out that they're not exactly safe at this place they realize that the people they're staying with are actually fucked up and that's when people start getting murdered and you discover all these dead cheerleaders and otis is doing all these fucking diatribes about his fucked up psychology and his this revolution like this madness that he's talking about it just makes zero sense uh but it, it, it's it's interesting to listen to to say the least and everything that you get with with Otis interacting with people is gold. Everything from like him wearing like a fucking burn this flag hat and like drinking a beer and like picking his belly button. Like they're about to throw knives at the one guy that's tied up in the garage and it's like all that stuff. It's so weird. And I love, like I said, how he blends the, the video with the, uh, 
the film and all that like just the multi format throughout the film it's great i'm just trying to cover the mic so the wind doesn't fuck it up too too bad but uh yeah house of a thousand corpses like i said it does kind of get supernaturally near the end but it's it, it's it's more or less a film about people being held hostage at a house and then ritual uh ritualistically murdered so to speak or sent into their their own tomb if you want to call it that i'm not going to say too much more about the film other than i I really do love it i think it's a great debut film so uh we're going to move along to the devil's rejects which is his sequel to house of a thousand corpses with it follows the uh the otis character bill mosley sherry moon zombie and captain spaulding played by the late great sid hag um and this movie flips it, man. There's none of that weird multi-format shit. It's all shot on like 35 or, or, or high quality digital. And just, it's a story. It's one fucking story. It's none of this kind of uh, weird, like I said, cutaway shit. It's all its own thing. You got great characters. Tons of like 70s uh, character actors. You know, like the dude from uh, Every Which Way But Loose is in this film. You got uh, chicks that were uh, in 80 slasher films. All that kind of, like it's great. It's such such a good uh a a good film from from my my childhood that i I just hold in such when people say that movies from when i grew up suck dick i hold up movies like the hills of eyes remake devil's re devil's rejects all that kind of shit so uh i i think we got we got a decent batch of stuff when we were kids like people my age that is so and i think that's why a lot of people do respect uh rob zombie because we grew up watching his stuff we grew up like i feel like i grew with him as he grew into the filmmaker that he is today and yeah man so the devil's rejects before i go off on a fucking tangent there devil's rejects it's about our, our our three heroes now they're on the run because the house has been fucking raided by the cops they're on the loose and they're just trying to find refuge and uh throughout their throughout their trying to find a refuge they end up at this hotel they end up at a fucking uh, a brothel run by the none other than motherfucking um, oh my god, I can't believe I don't remember his name right now. Um, oh my god. Peter from Dawn of the Dead. What the hell is his name? Ken Forey. Okay, so Ken Forey is in the film. He plays uh, sort of uh, Sid Haig's like, long-lost brother kind of character. And it, 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 it's great. It's great. Like If you thought there was one-liners in House of a Thousand Corpses, you got n- no fucking idea what's coming to you in this film. It's great. It's Michael Berryman is in this goddamn film. Danny Trejo, Diamond Dallas Page, the wrestlers in this film. Like, there's so many good, memorable characters, and like nothing goes to waste with this film. It's all good. It's all really good. So, uh, I, my my two favorite scenes are definitely like within the two like set pieces. I think when you think of this film, there is two set pieces or three set pieces. There's the house. There's the the hotel and then there's the brothel and i guess there's the fourth which could be the road because they're on the road a little bit in this film it is a road film i guess you could say but there's there's a scene where basically bill mosley walks these two guys to their own fucking to their own death you know going to dig up some guns that he buried and it's all it's all so so inspired by like chainsaw massacre and just like the exploitation films of the 70s like you know, he cuts, he cuts a guy's face off, you know, and wears it into the house and just terrorizes the wife of, of the dead guy's face he's wearing. It's nuts. It's twisted. You know, he sticks a gun in between this chick's legs. And then later on in the film, he comments how he can still smell the pussy stink on it. You know, like, come on, man. This is nuts. This is not for children for sure. But fuck, it's, it, I'm telling you, uh, great film, good dialogue, good characters. What's, what more can you say? It's great. Check it out. You could you could watch Devil's Rejects without watching House of a Thousand Corpses the same way you could watch Terminator 2 without watching Terminator first, but you're going to lose out on all those nuances. Like with the Terminator example, if you didn't watch the first one, you wouldn't realize how big of a deal it was that Sarah Connor is in this hallway trying to escape from the mental institution and runs into the Terminator, the, T1, the T-800, who recently or beforehand tried to murder her and now everything's okay. like the gravity of the situation has changed if you have not seen the first film same with godfather part two i just watched that last night and there is some shit in there that you would not fucking get if you did not watch the first one and that's a fact so uh yeah devil's rejects not for the faint of heart uh, there's some graphic stuff happening in it and you know don't watch it with your mom unless your mom's 
pretty fucking hard. Unless your mom watches a lot of Jerry Springer, I wouldn't recommend her watching this film with you. Um, yeah, w w like I said, we're going to skip past H Halloween and Halloween 2 and 31, and we're going to jump right to Lords of Salem. Holy shit. I love this film. I love it. I, it's part of the inspiration behind Spiral Scratch, the, the short film that I shot uh, last year. Check that out if you haven't. It's on the channel. Um, it's it's all about this girl who's a recovering uh, addict, and she's uh, working at a radio station with a couple of other guys, and she gets delivered this record, and she starts experiencing this very weird stuff, very weird stuff, very witchy shit, and this kind of goes back. This movie has has its weird kind of House of a Thousand Corpses weird shit happening near the end, but uh it's all it's all shot on 35 or like i said high quality digital there's none of the eight millimeter video type stuff happening but you got this weird movie about this record it's a witch film you know it takes place in salem i guess if you're if you're into horror you should you should be able to pick that up just by based off the title lords of salem salem witch trials all that kind of shit so uh sherry moon zombie i think this is her best performance that she's ever done i really loved it thought her room was kick-ass it had like the the painting of uh the moon from the is it Sidney Lumet or one of those one of those French directors from the from the early the early days of cinema that did this film about I think it was called A Voyage to the Moon where this rocket went and shot into the moon's eye very iconic stuff but all of the all of the stuff that's shot in the hallways of this film is very scary all of like the weird priest interactions like everything about it is very puke worthy or almost will make you puke you know what I mean and there's scenes in here that are so messed up and weird that you can feel the Rob Zombie uh, music video coming out. You know what I'm saying? Like th this, this is quickly turning into one of my favorite Rob Zombie films, even more so than uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. So it's it's good shit, man. It's good. Sh I can't really say too too much about this film, other than you know, sh girl works at a record shop or works at a uh, radio radio fucking station gets this record and this record has fucking ties to the devil more or less and uh it, it, these three chicks that live in her apartment building are witches and they're fucking with her and it's it's cool man it's kind of like a rosemary's baby weird kind of witchy movie but like it's, it's it's really good it's it's definitely i think his most unique film it's his most unique film it's the most rob zombie film without churching it up with all the fucking wells and bis <laughs> bells and whistles you get with some of his other films so uh we're gonna move ahead to the final installment or possibly final installment in the the devil's rejects trilogy and that is called three from hell uh, i talked about this movie recently on the channel i believe but i just want to quickly give my thoughts on it again so we're 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 following the, the end of Devil's Rejects where they're presumed dead. If you've seen the end of the Devil's Rejects, they looked pretty fucking dead to me. But miraculously, they survived and they're in prison and they escape from prison and it's all about them getting to Mexico. And once they're in Mexico, shit hits the fan. But uh, if you listen to s certain podcasts, you, I've agreed with certain people that have said like, you know, the, the, the main baddie in the film, which is the Mexican dude, he, he doesn't like... Like, sure, he, he might be a baddie, but he doesn't do anything that's that badass in the film to warrant, like, us being like, oh, shit's gonna hit the fan, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's, it's kind of lackluster in, in terms of that, but everything else is great. Like, Richard, I think his name's Richard Brake, who, or Richard Blake, who uh, comes in as the replacement for Sid Haig, who uh, passed away, sadly, but, you know, and was sick, but he does make his appearance in the film, and it, it's cool. So there's that. Rob Zombie definitely paid paid uh, homage and included Sid Haig for sure. So that's great. And you you got you got some crazy shit happening in this film with Otis Otis escaping and then kidnapping the warden from his prison and then, and then making the warden go to the prison and releasing Sherry Moon Zombie. And it's like this is so fucked. Like. Man, it's it's like you got he's got your family hostage. What are you gonna do? You're gonna say no? So he goes and does it, and now Sherry Moon Zombie, who's like at her all time fucked, like she's out of her mind. Even the characters point out, like, wow, she's even more crazier than usual. And uh, it's, all she wants to do is murder people and fuck around and be a badass little bitch. And it's it's cool. I really like her character. I don't think that she's uh, 
out of character by acting as crazy as she does in this one, hence with her being in prison for so long or however long it had been. I, I really do like that. And I really do like the Mexico stuff. And I like uh, like the little the little midget, the little midget dude and just all, all that all the little kind of quirky characters you get throughout the film in this one. Uh, there's like a slimy guy who sells them out who's a piece of shit. I forget what film I've seen him in, but yeah, man, this this Rob Zombie guy. I'm interested to check out his next film, and I'm interested in checking out um, uh, 31 again and giving it like a thorough chance this time because I feel like I just kind of you know watched it and I was like, eh, this this isn't what I like, and just that was the end of it. But uh, one thing I will say, I did like the Richard Bra- Richard Blake stuff that. Uh, I seen in the film like he plays this psycho guy and I think that Rob Zombie did get fucked over by that uh, Joker film because in the trailer in both trailers of both films there's the shot of like the face close like you know like the the guy's face up against the camera like talking to the victim Uh, so maybe he got fucked over but I know that movie came out around the same time as that Jared Leto Joker film came out but that's about all I got to say about the Rob Zombie films definitely stay tuned for a uh, killer horror remake segment talking about the Halloween films talking about Dawn of the Dead remake talking about a couple of other remakes we're not going to be talking about the shitty remakes i.e. uh Nightmare on Elm Street and even the the Friday the 13th remake I'm not hot on so we're going to be brushing over those and we're going to be brushing over Leprechaun Origins and all that kind of shit but maybe we'll take a look at Leprechaun Returns and maybe we'll take a look at uh you know, a couple of other little things that I really enjoyed coming out as in terms of remakes. So I appreciate everybody for watching the video. Uh, definitely check out the Facebook page. Check out the, in- the Instagram's kind of dry. I'm not going to lie. Check out the Facebook page, though. I'm more active on that. And uh, yeah, you'll find that shit in the description. Thanks for watching and adios. And yeah, I'm down at the fucking river. <laughs>